Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing some steps that I've kind of taken for granted in the sense of how long I've been doing this. Um, but I wanted to do this video because I'm noticing a huge influx of more end users. And whether your background is novice or advanced, these are steps uh, to optimally get your PC ready, whatever PC that is, Windows based, of course, for operating your CNC. So what we've got here is just six outline best practice steps. These are what I recommend everyone to do. If you already have a system that you feel is stable, it's totally up to you, of course, to implement these steps. But I will say this, the more people I've spoken to, whether it be a past client or a potential client or just in passing, that have performed these steps, they always tell me, even if they thought their system was stable before, they see a performance increase. So these are just best practice steps I've learned over the years. And again, I feel that there's a lot to be learned here. And I hope many of you do implement these and let me know the results in the comments. So first, I want to just cover what we're going to be talking about. Steps to be done in best practice for using your selected PC to control your, P your CNC. You're going to first and foremost review your PC's internal hardware to make sure it's sufficient for the software you'll be running. Best practice is to use double the amount of memory recommended for any software's minimum requirements. Now, guys, I have debated this for the longest time, whether, again, it be with potential clients, clients. If they're using the bottom of the barrel uh, PC, whether they purchased it at a yard sale, a friend gave it to them, you know, a family member gave it to them, it really doesn't matter. What matters is, are you using the proper internal hardware of the PC to actually control your CNC? Once again, we're using it for robotic automation. That means, optimally, you should be using, at the least, a dual-core processor. Right now... Quad-core processors are so cheap in both AMD and Intel. I prefer Intel myself, but that's my total preference. You can have a Ford and Chevy debate with that. Either one of those are fine, whether it be AMD or Intel, but a quad-core processor is going to provide you the largest bang for your buck for when you're doing multitasking. It makes everything smoother in the operation of all software, but much more coherent to the system, less burden on everything. So again, price point, very cheap and something to look at. Now, as far as your memory, look at the software you're going to be installing. Review all of the websites for the software you will be installing and look at what their minimum requirement is. And read the details closely because a lot of guys will say, well, Mach 3 says I only need this amount of actual memory. Well, that's true. And I've done videos on this in the past. If you go through my channel way back when, I broke down the minimum system requirements for these pieces of software. But what's interesting is when you read the minimum system requirements, they also have that caveat in there is what's known as optimally run requirements, meaning what hardware is optimal for you to run this type of software. And as years progress, it seems that people think because the software is older that it's not stressing the system the same way. Well, there's some truth to that. The thing to keep in mind is, is that you're still doing tons and tons of math with your CPU. And again, that central processing unit, we want to make sure, has enough memory and has enough free space itself to accomplish the task we're doing and not struggle and not lock up, not get blue screens, weird things happen, and be in a proper environment. So again, looking at this... I cannot emphasize enough, if you look at a piece of software and it's for motion control or it's for CAD CAM software, whatever it is, if it says it needs 4 gigs of memory or 2 gigs of memory, double it. That's the first thing out of the gate. Always double the amount of memory. It's going to make your system faster, everything smoother, and the price of memory is so low, there's really no excuse not to do it. I find a lot of guys run into more and more problems because they stress using an ultra, ultra cheap system, they'll buy the best robot and use the cheapest computer to run it. And I'll never understand it. I've gone through it numerous times on my channel. And the bottom line is the robot is being controlled by the brain of the system, which is your PC. So again, invest where it should be invested in, in terms of the highest dollar amount you can afford. I always recommend going with the highest dollar amount PC you can afford. It'll pay for itself in the long run as you expand your business model. And again, as you guys become more adept at manufacturing, it's going to have large amounts of payoff. So again, 
Another point that I cannot emphasize enough, many of you guys buy your systems overseas. You buy your system overseas, and I get comments all the time, questions all the time. I'm having problems with soft limits. I love your video, but I can't implement soft limits, and I'm running Mach 3. Okay, we start going over the weird things that are occurring, and you tell me that after I nail down some of the details, uh, going back and forth, a couple emails, and then you tell me that apparently you're using a copy of Mach 3 that came bundled with a system you purchased in China. Well, we already know that everything coming out of China, and everyone should know, is most likely pirated. Therefore, they're doing registry cracks or things to manipulate the software internally to make it install in your system. It appears to function normally. Most of the time, there's features missing. There's Trojans installed. There could be all kinds of corrupt entities, and you want to be very careful on what you install. First and foremost, if you purchase a system overseas, you should be purchasing a legitimate copy of Mach 3 or whatever motion control software you'll be running. And for that matter, whatever CAD CAM software you're running, because I'm seeing now that they are offering a lot of CAD CAM software overseas. Guys, do yourself a favor, and I cannot emphasize this enough, don't make more problems that will haunt you. <laughs> And I can't emphasize it more than that. I get questions, like I said, more times about software and PC issues that guys don't really associate with PC. And I'm telling you right now, your PC is everything when it comes to CNC. The hardware and everything else will fall into place if the PC is set up correctly. So this is imperative. I hope you watch this to the end. Reinstall your Windows operating system with the most recent version your PC and most control software can run. Common sense to me means if I'm dedicating a system for business use or I'm dedicating a system to implement uh, for just a robot, that is what that robot is dedicated for, that is what that system is dedicated for, and therefore dedicating a Windows operating system with a fresh install, it doesn't take long at all to do, especially with modern PCs running the proper amount of memory. Do that from the gate. And make sure you've backed up any files you want. Keep it as clean as possible. And starting with a fresh Windows install is the best way to go. Now, you can do a recovery. You can do a general install. A lot of guys will say, well, I've got this system. It's used. I don't have the operating system disk. Well, again, online, you can either purchase the operating system disk or you can either download a bootable copy um, again, I do offer consultations for that if we need to go down that rabbit hole, but overall the information is online and available if you're uh, looking to do so. Doing that one step will eliminate probably about, well, I'd say a good 90% of your problems. And the reason I say that is, again, with guys using either borrowed, you know, lended, Whatever type of computer they got, a yard sale computer, they think, hey, I turned it on and I'm good. Or they, I get told this too, I purchased it and had a new copy of Windows installed and they think everything is good. Never believe that. Always start fresh with your own system and what you did because we don't know what that end user did prior in terms of what kind of operating system they installed. That yes, it may be new. Is it pirated? Does it have any Trojans in it? Does it have you know, any things that could corrupt your CNC or make it potentially work in a manner that you're not accustomed to and then you're hunting once again down that rabbit hole because here's the thing we're trying to do once you eliminate all of these variables and you can see how I numbered everything here if you just use this video and go down these numbers with the PC and date this when you're completed with this PC that you've allocated for CNC use you're gonna have all of this knowledge to say hey you know what I already know this computer set up right. There's nothing here wrong with this. I can then install everything. And then if something else does arise and you do find you have a problem, it's much easier to identify using T&E. And that's uh, trial and error for those guys just getting involved with this genre. And then you're not chasing yourself down a rabbit hole of, okay, what could be wrong with the PC? Is there something wrong with software installed? So on and so forth. So once again, installing Windows with a fresh installation if you want to back up your files that's more than fine you want to do a system recovery that's fine that's where Windows basically reinstalls itself upon itself replacing all files that's fine the main thing is you start with a new operating system and the most modern version your your um, your motion control software 
and your PC can run. So if you're running Windows 7, I highly recommend going up to Windows 10 because those outdated operating systems are no longer supported and therefore you run down the rabbit hole again of trying to find you know drivers or any type of issues that arise you have to keep going back and back and back and hopefully finding the answers to questions where more modern operating systems already have that information readily available step two remove all programs and apps that aren't required for the operating system now again this to me is logical but I have a lot of guys that'll say well I have an HP system it came bundled with a lot of uh, pre-installed software guys get rid of it you're not using it for it. Um, you wouldn't leave your house with the water on. You're not using programs that are installed and once again dedicated to CNC use. Remove those programs. You want nothing that can corrupt the system. You want to keep the system as fresh and new as possible once again as previously discussed to make sure you can identify any issues that arise immediately. And once again rule out any of those issues being from the PC. So again if it has apps on there, anything eliminate it. Now, let me clarify one thing that I get asked a lot on, or I get told a lot on, um, or told about, I should say, and that is that a lot of guys will say, well, my computer's not even hooked to the internet. Well, that has its benefits and its flaws, okay? First of all, if you're using a modern operating system, you're never going to get updates. Some guys are okay with that, some people are not. When I say modern, Windows 10 and above. If you're running Windows 7, it'll update usually to Windows 10. And I've had guys say that I don't want to run Windows 10. And if I leave it connected online, then I'm running Windows 10 because I come back and the system's updated. This is totally, once again, up to you, the end user. Keep in mind, and I'll say it again, the older the operating system, if it's not supported by Microsoft, you are SOL in terms of time finding the answers to most of your questions or most of the solutions unless you're hunting and hunting and hunting you know previous articles online some may actually work some may not and I see clients go down that rabbit hole a lot of times and I'm trying to save many people all of that time by saying stay with the latest and the greatest you cannot go wrong this is why I always recommend using either Ethernet or USB to uh, as far as a controller for any DB25 systems like a parallel port system like a G540 or any normal breakout board because again it, alle it alleviates you guys having to use a 32-bit operating system which is Windows XP typically or uh, I have some guys using Windows 7 try and have some good results some bad results so again I'm telling you right now keep it simple stay with those basics and you'll be set Install Revo One Install to keep your system as clean as when it was new. Now, this program I've discussed in previous videos. I'm going to put a link here. Revo One Install is amazing. I'm going to do another follow-up video on it, and it basically breaks down exactly how you can clean your system to keep everything immaculate. When I say immaculate, a lot of times guys think that when they use add remove programs that a program is thoroughly uninstalled. This is not correct. Okay, you're going to have registry entries left. You're going to have bits and pieces of that software remaining in your system which can play havoc, especially if you run into an issue when we're coming to CNC robotics. Therefore, in best practice, using Revo One Installer in, in, let's say, a Mach 3 installation failure removes the software as if it was never installed, leaving no traces. Some guys do not understand that, again, using the Add Remove programs in Windows, they assume that it's doing the same thing and it's not. So again, this program is designed for that. It cleans your history. It keeps your internet browser clean, everything. It's the only software I use and recommend in terms of, again, servicing your PC after going through the above steps. Because again, if you use it regularly, you're going to be set as far as having a brand new PC as far as internal operating condition. Step four, install all required drivers for your CNC controller. You've gotten to this point, everything is set, the system is immaculate, you're clean, you're good. Uh, now it's time to start installing the required drivers for your CNC controller. And that means whether it's a UC100, whether it's an ESS, whether it's uh, you know PLCME3, whatever it may be, this is the time now to install the required drivers for your CNC controller. Now there's a caveat here as well. If you guys have a CNC controller coming from China, you're in a conundrum because what may or may not be present is once again 
just because they provide a disk and they give you the driver does not mean that it's not been manipulated by them to contain any foreign software. My suggestion is, if you have a controller coming from China, always install an antivirus ahead of time. You do not need an antivirus most times unless, unless your PC is going to be installed in an environment where it's connected to the internet. Okay, if it's not connected to the internet, usually you're going to be fine. However, if you're connected online, I personally like my computers connected online, adding, you know, Bitdefender or another, you know, antivirus program is going to save you in the event you go to install something and it'll catch that before corrupting the system or potentially having you go back and have to rehash some of these steps. <clears throat> so again, listening to what I say with this sounds a lot like common sense, but Again, a lot of guys miss these details and think, oh, you know, I just got the system in. I'll just, I've got this new computer. I'm just going to do this, 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 this. I'm telling you right now, this is the probably one of the highest ranking ways to assure system success is starting with a clean system. And again, using this or any software that comes from China should always be checked in best practice. So my guys out there using Chinese controllers, Please do yourself a favor. Make sure you have that antivirus installed or any guy that has their PC uh, connected once again online, have the antivirus installed and it'll always protect you in the long run. Install your selected motion control software will be the next step. Mach 3, Mach 4, UCC and C, Pumatix, Linux, whatever it may be, this is the next following step. Once that is installed, then you have a decision to make. And I have certain clients that say, hey, I don't want to put cam software on this system. I just want motion control software because it's going to be used just to control the robot. So be it. That's fine. Use a USB stick to transfer your data. That's fine. Um, just keep in mind, whatever files you put on USB, and I can tell you from past experience myself, I've been burned by USB many, many, many times. If that USB file fails or there's a data corruption on that drive, you're SOL. Um, I would say before doing uh, the USB file transfer, get yourself a cheap hard drive. I mean, you can buy them now at 100 gigs for, you know, 20, 15 to 20 dollars. Buy that, it'll hold a billion files. It's much safer if you're going to do the file to file transfer. Uh, USB drives can do, like I said, they have havoc. They can get, once again, we're only dealing with 5 volts. So that transfer and that implemental uh, transfer of data, anything can happen in lieu of that. You lose power, uh, you know, any type of shock in the system, uh, anything. I mean, it can literally disrupt it and you can be SOL very, very quickly. So please be careful. If you forget to hit add remove in the bottom corner of the screen over here, like let's say per se, and if I if you don't use this safe to remove hardware on certain operating systems, I believe it's Windows 7, um, you will find you can get corruption. So again, I'm telling you, USB is fine to use. However, I highly recommend using a, uh, a hard drive and preferably um, a solid state drive. I like those much, much better. Their failure rate's much lower than a standard hard drive. Again, uh, CAM software, if uh, you're ready to install it on the system, you're going to have it on all one system. And a lot of guys using laptops, this is typically what my guys do. Um, that's fine. Now will be the time to install it. And once you've completed these six steps in this sequence, you know your computer's done, guys. That's pretty much it. You know that the computer is set up. I would then make a log stating that, hey, you know what? I've set this computer at this date. You can go into your recovery settings and have her set this as a recovery restore point. Now in um, Windows 10, this is totally possible. But again, most of it's a general walkthrough. Performing a, um, a recovery solution upon you completing all of these steps assure that if you ever have a problem, you could roll the system back to this previous time when this was all done and you start fresh. You don't then have to go through this whole rigmarole of all these steps in sequence to make sure the system was configured the way you originally did it. So again, um, knowing these steps, understanding this, I have a lot of guys that may not be as computer literate as others. These are critical. 
and I cannot emphasize that enough. Taking the time to do exactly as I've outlined here will save you easily 90% of the heartache. Most system problems with software, drivers, controllers, they all usually start with something PC related. Always something PC related um, in terms of either settings, which would come after this, but or also how the system is set up or where the software came from, of course. So again, I felt that this video was long overdue, like many of my videos. Um, I hope that it's helped many of you. Once again, you'll see my contact information at the beginning of the video. And at the end, uh, you can contact me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store at eDealers Direct. I thank you all for your support. Take care.